All the content contained in this webcast is for informational purposes only. The investments and strategies contained in this webcast may not be suitable for you. Please consult your own independent financial advisor before making any investment or trading decisions. Good morning, traders and investors around the world, and welcome to Thursday's edition of PremarketInfo.com, where we prepare you for the most important hour of the day, the first hour. Well, Dennis, I uh, hope you have your seatbelt on here. The spoos are just uh, up and down like a roller coaster. Yeah, we've really chopped around. Last night after hours, we actually dropped four or five, six points. Got as low as 13.45.75 on the E-mini. Uh, we've been in rally mode here for both the last half hour to an hour. Started rallying around 7.30 Eastern. We were flat. Uh, and we're up eight points now. So roller coaster ride here. Obviously, jobless numbers coming out at 8.30 is going to be a mover as well. Okay, uh, we stopped just short of uh, Wednesday's high here, which was 1360.75, stopped at 1360.50. Have Tuesday's interday high just above that at 362, so we have some real, uh, real well-defined uh, resistance in uh, the E-minis. Uh, coming back on the downside, uh, real good support at the close now, 1351, to see if we even get back down there. Uh, Dennis, we had the double bottom there in the low 1340s, and they managed to run a few stops there and then turn around on a dime. Really did, Joel. We bounced up off that area again, third time really down in that area, third time bouncing. I'm having deja vu. We usually, well, today is not happening, but uh, the last three days before, we've sold off overnight and rallied all day. So, I don't know. It depends on, obviously, what we do with that jobless numbers at 830, but it seems like <laughs> it, the play is to fade the overnight move. Yep, deja vu all over again. Down here at this 13, uh, 1350 area just seems to be excellent support. Uh, looks like Cisco is uh, back up to its old ways, Dennis, missing earnings. Yeah, it really is. It went in for a couple reports there, was uh, doing pretty well, but now uh, didn't, uh, didn't uh, disappointed the street there last night. The stock's down a buck 38, trading at 1740. Got to go out to the weeklies to try to find you some support here. You had a low there in late October at 1722. Um, that's the only thing I really see. You could say 17 is a big hole number two, but we've really consolidated here. We're really trading a lot of volume on Cisco, Joel, this whole 1740 area. Yeah, I'm looking uh, looking at this stock, and I'm looking at what it did in the pre-market, Dennis, and this thing got down to under $17, Last night. Had, yep. Uh, just uh, I will keep an eye on that area. I mean, that is low at 17.22. You're right. Was that November low? Boy, I, I haven't read the report or anything, but uh, just looks a little overdone to me. But that is a trade is a monster volume on this. So uh, 17 would uh, be probably a good area to try nibble it along or try some shorts. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about the shorting at 17, but maybe the long, Joel. But and, uh, but but that being said, sometimes this goes falls through. So make sure you know you give yourself, you know, know where your route is. Give yourself in a, in a range where you know you're willing to lose 10 or 15 or 20 cents. Know what your risk return is before you enter the trade. Know what you're willing to lose. Don't let a trade become an investment ever. Uh, Exxon Mobil went X dividend today, Joel. Uh, I don't know if we talked about it yesterday. We should talk about it today, though, because sometimes these stocks are in play before and after they go X dividend. Went X dividend for 57 cents. The adjusted close is 82.74, so it's trading at 83.15, which is actually up about 41 cents, Joel. Yeah, so uh, the folks that just bought that for the dividend uh, definitely will be looking to get uh, get out uh, at this price. It'd be nice to capture the dividend. Uh, did notice when looking at doing the numbers uh, yesterday, Dennis, he did get a double bottom in there at 82, 81, 80, uh, 292 from Tuesday and Wednesday. So obviously that's where the dividend players uh, stepped in. Uh, should still be a good number today. Uh, coming on the upside, Dennis, uh, 8402 and 8407, Tuesday's close and Wednesday's high should be good resistance. 
Apple. We've always got to talk about Apple. It held on to the 555 area. Again, it's starting to round a little bit there at the bottom. You see the rounding chart there? We're starting to form a nice little bottom in here. Uh, 558.73 is the low from two days ago. Yesterday got down to 560.85. We're up five bucks, so if the stock can start to keep that rounding bottom going, maybe some interest comes back into Apple here, Joel. Yeah, I know you call me an Apple hater, but uh, when uh, the spoos broke down yesterday and make that new low of the move, and that thing just did not budge below 560, uh, it kind of kind of turned uh, turned my opinion on it a little bit, Dennis. Uh, we are opening up into some resistance, uh, but that, I think this thing can make a run here. I'm a I'm a little bullish apple today. Yeah, I am too. Scary thoughts when we're both on the same side there, Joel. But yeah, I'm a little bit bullish here too. I think you got to buy pullbacks on this one. Takes out that 555 number again like we've said the whole time. You don't want to be long, but definitely in the low 560s, maybe a lower risk buy right now. Uh, Priceline reported last night, Joel. This is a stock we don't cover a lot. $700 stock. Not a lot of our traders trade it, but at the same time, the stock is a mover here, Joel. Uh, what was the after hours low there last night? Because I seen it got killed after the report. PCLN. Okay. Uh, yeah, they had a spike down, Dennis. I uh, hit 660. 660. Whoa, somebody got a little bit excited there. What was that? That low, it's an interesting looking at the chart there with that low, 678, so it went well below that, that low of the move, 660. Well, that's way overdone, I think. Uh, this stock has come back nicely, though. It's trading 704 right now, only down 15 bucks, so it's actually holding on not bad. I still think 700 even might be a good psychological swing number. It starts to take out through that area. Maybe it can go down to hurry. Obviously, trade it down to 660, so it can have a range. Or, you know, 700, maybe it finds an initial bounce off that area. Uh, but I'd use it for a swing number. Yeah, Dennis, uh, it's hard to give numbers on something, that, you know, a high price stock like this, but we'll do it anyways. Uh, I'll be looking to this thing, if I did trade it, uh, I'd be looking at this whole 690 to 710 area. 710 has been the been the top since uh, that scary low at 660 there. So if I was long or to nibble this in the pre-market, I'd certainly uh, keep an eye on that 710 level. Or if I was brave to try short, uh, 710 seems to be someone stepping up to the plate there. 712 has been the high of the rebound. So let's keep an eye on that. the 690 to 712 in price line. Avon Products back in play. This stock, the roller coaster ride that this thing has been on, is incredible. Um, Obviously, the original takeover, Cody taking it back in April, was why it gapped up in the first place. Had a bad earnings report, and Cody lost, or uh, um, you know, the merger where they had rejected at Avon Products, and everybody kind of forgets. Had a bad earnings report. Stock went all the way back down, filled that gap there uh, in early May, and then spiked up again on rumors that Cody was going to, you know, come in and start making a, another bid for the stock. Came all the way back down. Everybody forgets. Gets right back down to that support again, Joel, 1945. And now Cody is making a bet here again. Twenty-four seventy-five. Cody is offered for Avon products. They have been rejecting these, so they'll probably reject it again. And Cody said, if Avon rejects it this time, then they're just going to part ways with them. So Avon is pulling back here a bit now. Twenty-one eighty-five. But it spiked up pretty good there in the pre-market, Joel. How high did it get? And where did they say they were thinking of? Well, they uh, were thinking about uh, they they offered twenty-four seventy-five, and they figure Avon's probably going to reject it again, though. What, uh, yeah, well, twenty three seventy five is where it got to in the pre market. Wow, yeah, and, and that coincides pretty nicely with those highs twenty three fifty eight, twenty three. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, or twenty three uh, fifty. So you know, so it's getting back up there. That whole area up there has been resistance and supports well defined in this one. Yeah, I mean, it just can't be short stocks like this. You know, with those kind of rumors and those kind of things out there, I'd keep an eye on the twenty three seventy five in the pre market. Uh, big range yesterday, so obviously, uh, you know, someone uh, someone got the memo, Dennis. I don't know who got the memo, but someone got the memo. Wasn't open, us. <laughs> you know, opened at 19.57.45 low. Lo and behold, rallies two bucks, takes back uh, a lot of the ground that it lost, and uh, lo and behold, there's there's news out. Uh, if I was Avon, I would take it. I mean, you know, here's a stock, seventeen bucks, broken business model. I don't know. They should they should take it, but <laughs> who am I? 
Who are who are we to run Avon? So we'll see what they do with it. Kohl's KSS reported earnings this morning. Stock is getting uh, it's coming back quite a bit though from the lows. I'll let you all find the lows for you. It's trading 49.50 right now, so only down a buck 36. I seen that thing trading under 49 a little while ago though. I'm looking at a double bottom here at this 49.50, so that area might be a decent swing number. How low that thing get? 48.75. 48.75. Yeah. Yep. And then we're getting a nice bounce off that in the pre-market, bouncing up here to 49.50. So let's call that range, uh, let's call that 49.50 resistance. 48.75 will definitely be good support. At 48.75 coincides with the low back on April 10th at 48.74. And uh, be a little bit of a struggle here to get back into yesterday's range. Uh, the low was 58.18. So if, in fact, we can hold this uh, 49.50 level, I expect 49.50, I expect sellers at 50. Uh, NWSA, which is News uh, Corp there. They obviously have the other stock, NWS, which trades right with it too. But we'll just cover NWSA. They just move coinciding with each other. Um, stock is trading up on their earnings report from last night. I think that thing was trading over 20 bucks, though. Trading 1985 now. I'm looking. It's $20 level, though. There was multiple highs here. If you get above there, 2040 had a double top up there too in March. Uh, but this whole $20 area, that's where we topped out there just a couple weeks ago. And we topped out there multiple times in March and before cutting through and making the double top up there at 2040. So 20 bucks could be a good swing number on this one too here, Joel. Did trade up to 2067, Dennis. That got a little overdone. That got a little bit. They get overdone here in these after hours. you got to be careful in those after hours. Don't get too excited and buy something too high. Uh, 2040 uh, was a high back in March, so if we really do go into rally mode, I uh, expect good resistance there. Uh, I mean, there's just a lot of uh, negative uh, karma uh, surrounding News Corp and stuff, so uh, getting this little pop here, people have been, uh, been contrarian against all the news with Rupert Mur Murdoch and stuff. This is definitely an opportunity to get out here. Yeah, the CTLs and one more that reported... Uh I would just want to make you note, uh, CenturyLink is the stock. Uh, it's not really had much volume, but it was trading some there last night. Joel will hunt down where it got to after hours after reported earnings there last night. Uh, there's some nice a nice bottom here, 37.76, 37.79, 37.83, multiple bottoms with whole 37.75 to 37.80 area, so that's going to be excellent support. Uh, yesterday's high was 38.45. If it gets above there, you've got 39. And I know 40 on this thing is absolutely, absolutely enormous. I've seen institutional size up there. So for whatever reason, if it really went into rally mode, there would be high-frequency traders all over the place in the 39.90s. Yeah, 38.63 is where it's hit in the pre-market. Dennis, uh, this thing really, if you get a chance, if this thing dips back under 38, uh, just just a ton of support from 37.76 up to that 37.95. Really well-defined support area. Uh, resistance, Dennis, uh, you got to use this 39.01 level uh, is major resistance. Prudential getting an upgrade from Morgan Stanley today, PRU. This stock, you've got to see this chart here, Joel, if you haven't looked at it for a while. It has been straight down for the last five, six sessions. Just the ugliest chart that you ever did see. Obviously, uh, Morgan Stanley's coming out and picking a bottom this one. Uh, so it's, you know, $60 we were here five, six trading sessions ago. We got down to as low as $50.29 there yesterday. If we go out to the weeklies, you are coming into a bit of support here. So obviously, uh, Morgan Stanley is maybe looking at us from a support perspective and definitely not from a momentum perspective when they're upgrading that at this. What do you think of this, Joel? Yeah, I think they need a new technical analyst there. <laughs> Uh, unless unless he downgraded it at 64 and is upgrading it Maybe. now. Well, that's uh, what you're supposed to do, aren't you? <laughs> this is one hell of a chart, Dennis. Uh, uh, buyer beware on this. Uh, keep a real close eye here uh, on 52.17. Uh, that was a high from two days ago. Looking in the pre-market, uh, this thing has not traded a lot of volume. Got up to 52.15. Uh, who knows? Maybe they're just trying to help out an institutional customer that's trying to unload some stock or trying to get short because, but technically based, I mean, I just, you know, I, I, this is just really a stretch here to upgrade this thing right here. 
Met life trades with that a lot of times. We might as well talk a quick technical on Met too. It hasn't broken down nearly as bad as Prudential, but it did kind of have a breakdown day there yesterday. So this is one of those charts where you almost think like if it gets that sympathetic move up, maybe there's an opportunity to actually try a short on this because this stock did have a breakdown day yesterday. It is bouncing. It's it's not traded this morning, but it's bid up a little bit at 34.15 with the market up. You wonder if you can you know, if you could get a short off in the upper 34s here. May not be a bad call and a setup there with a low risk. Maybe you know stop out above 35. But what do you think of that play on Met? Ah, uh, I mean, it's just kind of, it's kind of just taking. It looks like it has another leg down here, Dennis. Uh, I would, you, I would focus on thirty-four fifteen. That was yesterday's high. If you want to look for a short in that area, but uh, neither of these charts look very good, Dennis. Yeah, I agree. I don't think I want to be long these things. And interesting, um, interesting on the Met setup to possibly short a bounce on that. Uh, that's all we've really got for you here today. Uh, obviously, the market's up eight here. We got jobless coming out in a couple minutes. That's going to be a mover. So, uh, what's your overall take here, Joel? Uh, mound of resistance up here, Dennis, from thirteen sixty fifty up to thirteen sixty two and a quarter. Uh, pretty wide open on the upside. After that, we've already had fifteen point rally off the low. So. Another five points of that would take us up uh, to upside target of 13.65 and a quarter. Uh, from a chart perspective in the Big Ten, folks, just take a quick look at this Wells Fargo chart. It looks like uh, Warren's in here buying the stock at 32.50. Uh, that is just an incredible level of support. So if you're looking to buy something that get on a on a good level, if that gets near 32.50, you probably got a low risk long. Uh, but we'll see what happens with the jobless number, and uh, we will be back with you tomorrow.